Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, we're gonna be going over on the core concepts in Figma, which is frames. And now you might know frames by different names and other design applications, but a frame is basically a way to contain your design on the canvas, where you can organize your designs into several frames on one canvas. So let's get going with that right now. Okay, so we've now managed to get this far without truly talking about frames. And I mentioned before that they're basically artboards. If you've used artboards, I honestly, it's been so long since I've used Illustrator at this point, I don't remember what they're called, uh, but I assume it's something along those lines. Now we have all these sort of shapes sitting around here. I'm gonna start to delete some of this stuff. Obviously we don't need to keep it. So let's go ahead and delete it. Yeah, let's just delete it. Now what I'm not going to delete is this area over here. Um, well, I'm not going to delete it just yet. I'm gonna work with it. So what we wanna do here is I want to simply just create a new frame. And you'll notice if we hover over this icon in the top left, it looks sort of like an artboard or a frame, you'll see that it just says frame tool. And if we hover over this arrow, we get a dropdown for all of our region tools. This is, allows us to basically set up regions to export things or just contain them. And a frame tool is basically just a way to contain your design inside of a frame. I mean, consider this, we have a giant canvas here. This canvas is infinitely expanding and maybe not necessarily infinite, but it's, it's, it's able to expand considerably, right? And much more than we'll ever need to grow from. But typically your designs don't exist in this giant space that's uncontainable, right? You typically have a, uh, a contained dimensions that you're working with, and that's very common. So what we're going to want to do is select the frame tool to set up our frame. And you'll notice instantly we get some default sort of presets in here. We have things like the iPhone, iPhone 7 Plus, iPhone SE, iPhone or Galaxy S8, uh, Google Pixel, LG G3. Now, one thing I love about Figma, and I've mentioned this maybe once or twice before, is that they do not exclude. Uh, a big problem of mine in, in Sketch was always that it was Apple everything. Now, granted, they did add some, some Android stuff at some points, but for the most part, it was uh, OS X only and iOS for everything. And so that was always kind of a pain for me to have to look elsewhere for this stuff. And as an Android user myself, I really appreciate having these tools available for not just one platform. To me, that really stands out as a company who's wider thinking than just okay for Mac people, right? And not that iOS is bad or Android is better or whatever, everyone has their own opinions and own needs. And even though I prefer Android, it doesn't necessarily mean that one is better than the other. So because of that, I'm glad that a whole host of variety of devices is available here especially in the phone section, right? So you can see we have a whole bunch of different dimensions from our pixel sizes of all of our different phones, our tablets and desktop. Now we're gonna be talking about desktop in this one because this layout that we're gonna be working with is a little bit more desktop-y than mobile layout E. And we're going to get down to mobile layouts as well as we go and we talk about things like constraints and stuff like that. So don't worry, this is not permanently desktop. Now you'll notice we have two options, which is desktop HT at 1440 by 1024 or by 1024 by 1024. Now here we can basically select either of these. Now 1440 is probably the widest you're gonna design to. I mean, you could design for an ultra wide monitor or something like that. I actually have an ultra wide monitor, but I can't imagine designing for one because of that's like such a small audience, maybe at some point, right? But let's go ahead and select desktop HD. And as you can see upon selecting it, it just dropped it on our canvas. Now we could have dragged a frame just like we would have any other shape. Click and drag, here's our frame, it can be any dimensions, right? So you're not limited to these presets by any means. As you can see, this desktop HD is pretty big. And what we were working before, from before here was really just sort of uh, an estimate of what a desktop would look like. But here we actually have our pixel dimensions inside of this giant canvas. 
Now what's cool here is that we can basically just move our stuff over and when we move it over, it's going to be contained in our frame. You'll notice that right now, all of our layers are entirely aligned with each other. That means they're basically of equal containment, right? None of these layers is containing each other. They're all on equal footing on the same level of the hierarchy. But we want uh, both our header and our background image, we want these to be on our desktop here. And we want them to be contained with it, so much so that anytime any of these bleeds outside of it, it will be immediately cropped for us. So let's go ahead and one way we could do that, I'm going to have two objects here, so I'll do these two different ways. We can drag this rectangle on to desktop HD. And you'll notice, let me zoom in here, actually let me zoom in before I do this. You'll notice that when I drag this on here, the moment it becomes a part of the frame, two things happen. Look in the left hand corner in your layers property. You'll notice that the rectangle is now underneath an arrow that says desktop HD, meaning that it's actually uh, in the hierarchy of things inside of desktop HD. The moment I pull it away enough, you'll notice the cursor crosses the plane here. It's now actually back to where it was. Once again, the cursor of the drag crosses onto the frame and we now also on the canvas get this sort of dot 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 dash line um, around our frame. This is indicating to us that this is going to drop into this frame. Okay, I'm going to put it up top here. You notice there's a nice little snapping going on. We can always turn that off. It's too hard to show on this monitor, but you'll have some red X's that are showing you if things are snapping correctly. Um, a really cool feature. Okay, so check this out. We now have our rectangle inside of our canvas. I'm going to click and drag all the way till it snaps to the end. Okay, next thing, I want to move this into the canvas. Now, again, we could do it the same way, or we could do it in our layers property simply by clicking the rectangle and dragging it underneath desktop HD. Now you'll notice a couple of things have happened. It's become invisible. Basically because the, the frame is the bounding of this frame, right? I mean, outside of this frame, if something is a part of it, it should be cropped off. Just like any sort of photo that you put into a frame is cropped off at the edges of a frame, right? Uh, hence the name. And you also notice in our right hand column, our X property is now at negative 797 or whatever yours may be. It's, it's negative because it's off the canvas, right? And we could, move this onto the canvas simply by hitting zero on X. We don't have to rely and click and drag for everything. And, and more times than not, I'm actually manipulating numbers. For instance, you know, I could move and drag this up top here until it snaps. That's all in good. Uh, or I could zoom in, I could select this, and I could actually adjust the Y value until it gets to the point where I want it to be. Now, granted, you're not getting sort of the, the snapping that you are, but it's also a little bit more safe mathematically. If you know maybe like the header's height, you can do some math there. Either way, the tools are here to help you. Now, you remember in the last video, I set up this image to be tiling, which is really great because we're gonna be using this as our background here, and I can drag this all the way here, and I'm gonna make this a little bit less tall. I'm gonna select my fill. I'm gonna increase the tile size on here just ever so slightly maybe get like three rows in here. That way we're not seeing way too much repetition. Okay, so check it out. We now have our objects in a frame and we've learned a couple of things that when they're in a frame, they're contained in our layers, right? But also their properties and their dimensions in terms of positioning are actually now positioned relatively to the frame, which is super nice because obviously we don't want sort of some nebulous number here that's off in space of whatever this global canvas is. We wanna be able to say, hey, this should be at zero, zero, and that would position it in the top left corner. Working in these numbers is really super important. Now you also notice something brand new that we haven't seen before. It's going to be a topic that we cover a lot in this series because it's one of Figma's most powerful and interesting features. It's that of constraints, which is immediately below here. So remember working in the last video, we had layer fill stroke and all this stuff, but we didn't have constraints. And that's because constraints relate directly to a frame. You're basically saying, Hey, when this frame resizes, what should this thing do? right? And right now the constraints are set up so that it pins to the left and to the top. 
Now we could pin this to the left and right and then it will shrink in size. There's a whole bunch of cool stuff there. Like I said, we're gonna be going over that stuff in great detail because constraints along with components are two of the biggest, most powerful, awesome, excellent features within Figma, okay? So here we have our frame and just like that, things have gotten a little bit better. And if we were to remember, we saw this when this was off canvas, by the way, it was invisible. If we were to drag this over, only the parts that are off canvas are invisible. I mentioned it's like a frame, the same concept applies here. So it doesn't have to be entirely off the frame to have that like clipping going on. This, this functions exactly like it does in other applications. Now what's cool here is that we get sort of free exporting with frames. If we were to select the name desktop HD from the frame, or we were to simply select it from our layers bar, we could come over here and select export, and then we could export the uh, desktop HD, and it would save an image of this entire frame for us. We didn't have to do any slicing. We didn't have to say, hey, you know, export all this stuff. It's going to export the frame and the frame's bounds, right? That's it. Obviously, I keep saying this, exports are something we're gonna cover in great depth because it's a topic with great depth, but also one that can be super easy. Now, frames for the most part function like a lot of things in Figma. If we were to select our frame, we could do Command D or Control D on Windows and duplicate the frame. It's gonna duplicate it and everything in it. We can also rename the frame. Let's say we don't like Desktop HD. In fact, this is a mock-up of the Level Up Tuts Pro page. Um, I have, I can actually show you my uh, one that I designed it on right now. Let me head to my Figma file that I work in here um, for just different design ideas I work with. This is just sketches and stuff like that. And as you can see here, I have my design that I've done here for the pro page. And we're, we'll be recreating this a little bit over the next few videos, just because it's a design I like, it's something I made, and it's gonna show off a lot of really cool features um, because I used all of the features that Figma has to offer in this. You also notice my layers are pretty sloppily named here. Um, that's just because these are quick sketches and wasn't intentionally turning into a big design. If I were to be doing this for a client or working further on it, I would obviously be uh, cleaning this up considerably and we'll be doing so when we work in Figma. So as you can see here, let's go ahead and start that by renaming this. And this is just going to be Pro Sign Up, okay? And the pro sign up aspect of this is basically, hey, this is a sign up page for the Level Up Tutorials Pro program. Oddly enough, you can get the series for uh, subscribing to becoming a Level Up Pro. So let's do one more thing. I'm gonna start moving some of these layers around and renaming them. We briefly touched on renaming things just by right now with this pro sign up. Uh, I'm putting the header rectangle up top here and the background billboard right here. I'm going to rename the header simply by double clicking on the word rectangle three and say header. I'm going to double click on the rectangle three and name it background, okay? And this is super cool, okay? So in the next video, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get started showing you some of additional features that may be kind of simple, and we're gonna build into Figma's more powerful features. I mentioned in the interface overview, like a whole bunch of stuff, and you'll, you'll see time and time again that Figma is really deep. There's a lot here. So at any given point, if the next video isn't something that you're super excited about, just skip ahead. There's a whole ton of content here. If you wanna jump to comments or you wanna jump to prototyping mode or code mode or any of that stuff, just do it. Um, you know, these ideas will all build upon each other. You can always come back. But for the most part, there's a lot of great stuff to learn in Figma and I hope you continue to watch and learn. If you'd like to complete this series along with all of the excellent stuff that you will learn in it, head to leveluptutorials.com forward slash store or store.leveluptutorials.com. They take you to the same spot and you can purchase this series or become a level up pro and get streaming access to this. You get all of the Figma files, .fig files from this series or any sort of updates or new releases that come with updates in Figma. Now, I say this because I know Figma is a new product, and even though it's really deep and there's a ton to learn here, there's a ton coming, and there's a lot of really great features. Maybe your favorite feature from your favorite application might be missing. I can assure you, I don't know if it's on the way or not, but um, 
from what I've seen, the team at Figma is rapidly improving this, which is already a beast of a product. So fire up the next video. We're gonna talk about some things like drop shadows and filters and stuff we haven't talked about on individual layers so far. So we're gonna get into some more interesting layer properties. As we start to build this design out, I'm gonna show you exactly what I did to build my design and we're gonna do it the right way. So again, if you wanna learn the finer points of Figma while doing a practical design, uh, purchase this story series, become a level up pro, all that good stuff. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.